Welcome to Trinity Kids Online. I'm Brady. I'm Wally. And today we kick off a brand new series called Highwire. It's all about daring to trust. And Abraham was a dude who dared to trust God even when he had to wait. For like a uh, really, 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 really long time. So let's go! TK, thanks for hanging out with us right here at Trinity Kids Online. We are so excited that you guys are here because we got some incredible things in store for you guys today. Which brings us to the mighty challenge time. We're talking all about trust today. So I wonder, can you trust what you see in this epic game of real or fake? We will throw a picture up on the screen and you will have to decide whether you think it's real or fake. Can you trust it? And see if you can beat me by getting more right than me. All right, grab a friend, a sibling, any adult in your house, or why not all of them? Because challenge time is so much more fun with more people. Are you guys ready? Awesome, let's go. Guys, welcome to challenge time. Today we are playing a game called Real or Fake. Now, we are going to be shown a picture, super simple. We are going to have to decide whether we think it is real or fake. Really not that difficult. If you think it's real, you think it's real, then it's real. If you think it's fake, then it's fake, and we figure it out, find out together. All right, guys, here we go. Moving on to the very first photo. Wow, that is a big cow with some big horns. <clears throat> I think there is no way a, corn <clears throat> a horn is that large, no shot. No way in Hank. So let's see if that is real or fake. What do you guys think? Here we go. The answer is real. The world record for the biggest set of horns goes to this steer named Lurch, a staring 37 inches in circumference. Guys, if you're not sure what circumference means, that means all the way around. Just so you guys know, that is a big horn. It's like a big soccer ball on the side of his head. That's crazy. Well, did you guys get it right? Maybe you did. Not like me. I got it wrong. That's so totally okay. We can do this together. Moving on to the next round. Here we go. Is this picture real or fake? These guys are playing tennis on the top of a massive tower. That's gonna be big sad if that tennis ball falls off the edge, just saying. So we're gonna have to say that is fake. No way people are playing tennis up there. What happens if you get a little excited and go whoa, 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 and fall off? No one wants that. They're not even wearing any safety gear protection. No chance that's real. Fake, saying it's fake, what do you guys think? Here we go. It is real! This dizzying green roof, which doubled as a tennis court, sat atop a luxury, I'm not gonna say that because I'm gonna butcher that name, hotel in Dubai, part of the media stunt right before you in Dubai duty free men's open. Wow. So it's a publicity stunt. Yeah, ain't nobody playing up there normally. Crazy people. All right, let's see the next one here. We got some, huh? Purple watermelon? Watermelons are purple? Or is it even watermelon? Guys, can you even tell what this is? I'm not even sure. It, the, the rind is a little bit thinner than what you would assume a pineapple has, but it's like blue. No, I, none of these are real. I'm getting scammed. This is fake, all fake news. I don't believe it's real. What do you guys think? Let's see, answer is real or fake? Woohoo, it's fake, I knew it. This photo went viral because it was described as a fruit that can switch flavors from sweet to sour or salty to bitter. Wow, that'd be pretty cool if that did exist, but it's fake. Big sad. <laughs> it's so sad. All right, guys, here we go. The next one. Is this real or fake? This is, looks like some little girl is walking on the like a frying pan that is in sand. Hmm. You know, this is a really good Photoshop job. That's what I believe. I think this is fake again. What do you guys think, real or fake? Let's see, let's see, let's see. That is real? <laughs> Whoa, I'm really not getting this game. Maybe you guys are way better than me. This game is tough, man. This is a real giant frying pan in Australia that artist, Andrew Hankin, this is the latest installation located on the beach in Sydney. That's a pretty fire cool thing to check out. Maybe if you're ever in Sydney Beach, go check it out. Australia, it's kind of fire. Next one, here we go. Okay. Oh, oh, they're just giving this one to me. 
Is this real or fake? Yeah, dog doing push-ups, no shot. That's a fake. We can just skip over, super easy. Here we go, that's fake. Yep, fake, told ya. Easy peasy. This photo of a dog doing push-ups was photoshopped and the men in the scene were doing push-ups originally from the movie Never Back Down. Never seen that movie, but that's okay. Knew it was fake still, just saying. All right, moving on to the next one, here we go. Real or fake? I'm really not sure what I'm looking at here, guys. What do you guys think this is? It just looks like an escalator and the roof's red. You know, guys, a lot of these have been real and I thought they were fake. And this one I think is real, so I'm gonna say it's fake. You see where I'm going here? I thought it was fake, then it was real. I think this one's real, so I'm gonna think, say it's gonna be fake. Here we go, guys, got it, ready, here we go. This one's fake, it's real. <laughs> Why? In Solna Centrum is a metro station and shopping mall in Sona Solna municipality, approximately five kilometers from central Stockholm, Sweden. Wow. I'm sorry if you're from Sweden and I totally made those things horrible. Again, I'm pronouncing. I'm so sorry, guys. Anyways, moving on to the next one. Do you guys get a way to go, way to go? Real or fake? This picture, it looks like a cat that's basically 100% fur, 0% cat. And we're gonna see if this is real. And I think this one is real too. Do I go with that same logic that if I think it's real, it's actually fake? No, we're actually gonna say this one's real, real, not real fake. You know what I'm saying, guys? What do you guys think is a real or fake? Here we go. I think it's real. <gasps> it's real. That's a rabbit? This Angoria rabbit is one of the fluffiest creatures that you'll ever see in the world. The Angoria originates from Turkey and is considered the oldest domesticated rabbit. So if you guys want a fluffy teddy bear rabbit, you know where to go, go to Turkey. And yes, Turkey is not, is it also a bird, but it's also a place you can go. It's not wild, it's crazy, I know. All right guys, next photo, here we go. Real or fake, we have a big squid that has unfortunately landed on shore. But my guess is it's pretty obvious that this just looks Photoshopped, so I'm gonna say it's fake. What do you guys think? Could be real, could be fake. And it's fake. This squid is photoshopped over a picture of a whale that washed up in Chile. The bad news is that squids like this really do exist and one of them was found washed away in the shore of Spain. Giant squids are giant. Hence the name giant squids. This is a fake picture of a giant squid, but like they said, giant squids are real. All right, here we go, next one. Real or fake? A massive boat driving towards a little town island thing. Hmm. I mean, it looks kind of normal. I don't know what you guys think. This looks kind of normal size boat here. Just kind of weird angle, you know what I'm saying? I think it's real. Could be fake, but I think it's real. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It is real! This it, this is in fact one photo of the Pash Bulker, a ship famously ran around 2007 in Australia. The incident that was bad due to weather with a can The incident was due to bad weather while the captain was eating breakfast. So if we learned anything here today, folks, pay attention to where you're going so you don't crash into a rock. All right, here we go. We got two more guys, here we go. Real or fake? This is a big kitty cat edition. This is, this. come on, big kitty cat has to be real for sure. What do you guys think? I think it's real, here we go. Fake? Everyone totally, totally fell for a claim that this man had once had one of the biggest domestic cats ever, weighing 90 pounds. Apparently, after realizing that people had fallen hard for the hoax, he admitted that he had simply used Photoshop. Man, Photoshop is a dangerous tool, guys. All right, guys, this is the last slide. Stay with me, we got one more. Here we go, real or fake? A bear eating lunch with his family. <laughs> so precious. I want a bear eating lunch with my family. I'm gonna say it's real because I want a bear friend. I want a friend bear. What do you guys think? Real or fake? The answer is real! Wow, Casey Anderson adopted a ray and raised a baby grizzly, which he named Brutus. Oh, so cute. And he adores people and being around them. That's so nice. As long as you don't smell like meat. That's so important. We love bears. Well, guys, thanks so much for playing real or fake. Hopefully you didn't get real or fakes like me all the time because, you know, apparently I can't see things properly. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for playing. We'll see you in the next segment.
Well, that was definitely a bit more challenging than it seemed. Well, how'd it go for you guys at home? Whether you won or lost against me, we hope you guys had some fun playing that little challenge time right here at Trinity Kids Online. <laughs> I think they were really trying to trick us. As we looked at some of those pictures, it was so hard to tell whether what we were looking at on screen was real or if it was set up. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is trust anyways, right? Yeah, no kidding. See, trust is putting confidence in someone you can depend on. See, in today's story, Abraham needed to put his confidence in God when he had to wait a really long time. Can you think of a time you had to wait for something big? I remember when I was 10, we were gonna go to Disney World. And I was so, so excited, but I had to wait a little bit until we had spring break and our family could go. So as you guys watch today's story, what did you notice about God saying to you? Maybe it was a word or a phrase or an illustration. Maybe it's something that challenges you, or maybe it's something that actually encourages you. And today we've got something brand new called The Story Lab. Let's go check it out. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about trust, while we also take a look at a story of a couple who may win the award for the oldest new parents ever. Oh, and wait for this. Wait for it. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And this week we're talking about trust, which is putting your confidence on someone you can depend on. But how do you know who you can depend on? Mm, well, I think the best way is to look up. What do you see? The ceiling? <laughs> no. Imagine that we're outside. Oh, oh, uh, the clouds. Okay, imagine that we're outside and it's nighttime. Oh, uh, all the stars. Yeah, all those points of light way out into space. Constellations and galaxies, each one filled with more brilliant burning stars than we can imagine. And every single one points to God. I mean, God made all that out of nothing. It definitely makes me want to trust God. How many stars are there in the universe? 200 billion trillion stars. Whoa. Yeah. The sky was so amazing last night. I just have to take a picture for you. Look. Ooh, you have seriously got to upgrade. I know, I just couldn't capture it. So I looked up some pictures taken by the Hubble telescope instead. The Hubble Space Telescope has been orbiting the Earth for more than 30 years. It's about the size of a school bus and travels at 17,000 miles an hour, circling the Earth every 97 minutes. Check out this image from the Hubble. Whoa. This is the Prawn Nebula. It is 6,000 light years away. Stars are actually formed there, so the Prawn Nebula is like a nursery for baby stars. Mind blown. Whoa, wait, 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 I know this one. It's the, uh, the Veil Nebula. It's a leftover from a supernova that exploded like 20,000 years ago. Yeah, and check that one out. All those look like Christmas lights. Well, the red dots are actually dying stars called red dwarfs. And the bluish dots are burnt out stars called white dwarfs. And they are all part of this huge cluster of stars called the Omega Centauri. Oh, I, I know him. He's a transformer. I think we're talking about something different. Ah. Oh, is that it? I want to see more stars. Well, that's all I've got. Unless. What? We can make our very own stars right here in the lab. I'm ready. I don't think you're gonna need those. They're for style. Okay then, let's make it. Follow along and you can do this at home if you like. What have we got, Zeke? Step one, fill a big jar or vase or tank about two thirds full of water. Step two, pour oil into a small bowl. Or two, or three. Step three, add four or five drops of food coloring to the oil. You can use up to three colors. Step 
Step four, with the food coloring with the oil. It's a little latte, a really oily latte. <laughs> okay, pour. Wait for it. Whoa, <gasps> our very own shooting stars. Oh, can we see that again? Oil is less dense than water and floats on top. Food coloring is water-based and mixes with water. Once the oil is added to water, the heavier food coloring sinks down. As soon as they hit the water, they dissolve, forming tiny shooting stars. Oh, let's do it again. We've got tons of food coloring. I'd love to make stars all day, but we got a story to tell, and stars are a big part of this one. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God made our amazing world, but sin entered the world. People turned away from God and went their own way. So God picked one man, a guy named Abraham. And even though Abraham was like 90 years old and had no kids, God told him to look up. God promised Abraham he'd have more kids than stars in the sky. Yeah, and the whole entire world will be blessed through Abraham's family. But Abraham and his wife, Sarah, they waited for years and years, and they still didn't have kids. Which is where our story starts. We're ready. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. It's amazing how all of creation can talk to us about God. You know, after God told Abraham that he and Sarah would have more kids than there are stars, I bet they went outside at night a lot more. More children than all those stars? Are you sure that's what God said? He promised. He said, we'll have a son. God's promise was clear, but Abraham and Sarah spent years staring up at those stars waiting and wondering. They were both old, like old enough to be great grandparents. Could they really have a brand new baby at their age? But at last, one day when Abraham was 99 years old, God met with him again. It was the very hottest part of the day, and Abraham was sitting in the shade of his tent when he saw three strangers approaching. Abraham knew right away they were visitors from heaven. He went to greet them and bowed low to show them honor. My Lord, if you are pleased with me, don't pass me by. Let me get some water so you can wash your feet and rest under this tree. L let me get you some food to give you strength and then you can go on your way. All right, do as you say. Now making a fancy meal back then was a lot more than just heating something up in the microwave. Abraham found Sarah in the tent and asked her to bake bread. And then he picked the best calf from his herd and asked a servant to prepare it. Here is some stew and a fresh loaf. My wife makes the best bread in the whole land. <laughs> Where is your wife, Sarah? Over there in the tent. Now, you had better bet that Sarah was listening in on this conversation. I mean, here are three strangers out of nowhere who Abraham believes are from God. I mean, she definitely wanted to know what was up. I will surely return to you about this time next year. Your wife, Sarah, will have a son. <laughs> now? After all this time? I I'm worn out, and my husband is old. Can I really know the joy of having a baby? The Lord knew exactly what Sarah thought and said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for me? I will return to you at the appointed time next year. Sarah will have a son. I didn't laugh. Yes, you laughed. Oof. Sarah seriously got called out there, but God wasn't angry with her. God was gracious to Sarah, and Sarah did become pregnant, and after some time, she gave birth to a baby boy. God has given me laughter. Actually, everyone who hears about this is going to laugh along with us. I'm so old, but here I am taking care of a baby. What should we name him? What about Isaac? <laughs> of course, Isaac. You're going to have a big family, little one. As many as there are stars in the sky. 
The end. So, do you know what the name Isaac means? What? One who laughs. Well, that is spot on. Can you imagine how it felt for Abraham and Sarah to wait all those years? I have a hard time just waiting for the microwave popcorn to finish. <laughs> I know, right? Waiting can be hard. But here's the awesome thing. God is always trustworthy. God promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed through his family. And it took hundreds of years, but the whole world was and is blessed because of one of Abraham's descendants. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, Jesus. You got it. You can trust God all the time, especially when you're having to wait. Thanks, Brian. So what is our part in the story? Well, maybe you're having to wait for a broken arm or a sprained ankle to heal. You can trust that God is still with you and God still loves you. And you can ask for God for the patience to keep waiting. I remember when I had to wait forever when my mom said she'd get me my phone. I guess I could have trusted God more instead of just asking her, can I have my phone yet? Can I have my phone yet? Can I have my phone yet? Can I have my phone okay, yet? Okay, yeah, we, I... we get it. <laughs> Sorry. I actually had to trust God yesterday. My dad promised to play tennis with me after he got home from work, but then he had a video call that took over an hour. I had to trust God to give me a good attitude. Yeah, you know, the truth is, we're gonna have to wait for things. Sometimes we'll have to wait on God. But even while you're waiting, you can trust that God is still there and that God still cares about you. Got it? Got it. Wait for it. So, here's the thing. Trust God even when you have to wait. Yep, I can't wait for tonight when I get to see the actual stars. I mean, I, I can wait, but you get it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Here's something to check out while you wait. I have such a hard time waiting for microwave popcorn too. It is just too good and it smells too good. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Sometimes I have a hard time waiting for things too. But something that stood out to me today was when Brian said, God is always trustworthy, even when we have to wait. And they gave some great examples of things that someone like you or me might have to wait for. Yeah, see, trusting God in the waiting and talking to him lots about what you're feeling and while you wait, you can invite him into that experience just by asking him for help to wait because it's kind of hard sometimes. You guys are awesome, and we hope you enjoyed the new Story Lab experience. I know I did. Maybe you should try out the star experiment at home. Let us know how it goes. Yeah, well guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We had so much fun. Make sure to stay tuned for the so-and-so show, and we'll see you next week. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do some trust balls now, all right? Okay. Okay, you're gonna turn around, I'm gonna count to three, and then you're gonna fall back into my arms and you can trust that I will catch you. Great. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, just to be clear, you're gonna fall backwards into my arms. Oh. Right. I got it. Okay, you're not gonna fall forward or straight down. Okay, nothing strange. Great. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> One. I trust you. Two. I trust you. Three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. See, yeah. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My turn. All right. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Let's do it. <clears throat> One. Two. Three. Ah. Ah. And I'm John. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. What do we have today on the show, Brandon? Oh, you know, just your average, ordinary. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, later today on the So-and-So Show, our circus comes to you. You don't want to miss it. Trust us. Wait, what? Did he say the circus is coming here? That's what I heard. That's right. Right here on the So-and-So Show, you'll see a circus that isn't to be missed. Stronger than ever, flying higher, more thrills. Trust us. This can't be true. It's true. Trust us. 
You'll just have to wait. Okay, now I'm excited. Uh, me too. <laughs> what should we do? I, I guess we'll just wait for the circus. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Are we sure they're coming? Oh, we're coming. We are the self-proclaimed greatest show on earth. Trust us. All right. Okay. You know what? I I don't know if we can trust that they're coming. No. We don't want to hear it. You know what? Why don't we just uh, do our own circus? Yeah. Introducing the still pretty goodest show on earth. First, the daringest man on one wheel, Unijon. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, I, oh, oh, I almost did it. I, uh, okay, hold on one second. Uh, 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 hey, 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 come here. Help, help me. Help me. Oh! Hey! Amazing! For our next unbelievable performance, if you want to see an unbelievable performance, stay tuned. Stop it! For our next amazing act, we present the tallest man on earth! <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> Hit it! And now, the greatest jugglers in a 10-foot radius. <laughs> Time to up our game, juggling eggs. Whoa! Next. So I'd say our circus has been pretty incredible so far. You would? But do you really go to the circus just for the acts? But the circus will come to you later in... You also go to the circus for the food! Peanuts! Cotton candy! Popcorn! But the best thing of all... Funnel cake! cake. You may be asking... How do you make a funnel cake? Well, you need a cake. And a funnel. And then you just, you just shove the cake through the funnel. Yeah, uh, onto a plate. Exactly. Okay, here we go. Are we doing it? Making a funnel cake. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, perfect. Oh yeah, you're really gonna have to. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you go. You go. Hold on, hold on. All right. I mean, that can try. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Got it? Yep. Okay, here, you need this? No, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like the circus. I don't think that's how they do it. I think you're right. Bible story time with Kellen. Kellen. Hello, fellas. How's it going? Oh, you know, just putting on a circus. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, because the real circus was a no-show. Still to come at the So-and-So Show, the greatest show on earth. Trust us. Just ignore that, Kellen. Yeah. We've been waiting for them to come since the beginning of the show. I don't think you really gave them enough time. Well, it's been like eight whole minutes. You know, maybe we should jump into today's story. It's about someone who had to trust God and wait for a very long time. 
And here to help me are the so-and-so show players. Even better than the circus. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> Our story today comes from the book of Genesis. In Genesis, we read about a man named Abraham. God made a promise to Abraham that he would have more descendants than the stars in the sky and that the whole world would be blessed through his family. But at the time, Abraham and his wife Sarah didn't have any kids. Plus, they were already very old. So they waited and waited and waited some more. Sometime later, the Lord appeared to Abraham in the form of three men. Whoo, whoa, it's hot. My sweat is sweating. Yeah, oh man, it's definitely the hottest part of the day. Well, that looks like three men over there. But where do they come from? Wait a Mesopotamia minute. Gasp. That's the Lord. Lord. Hi. <laughs> look, look, look. If you're pleased with me, don't leave, huh? It, 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 it's hot. But hey, here, I'll go get you some water, huh? Yeah, some water. Right? That, you can wash your feet. Uh, and there's a tree right there that you can, you can uh, sit under, get some shade, uh, and some food. I, 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 I bet you're hungry, huh? huh? I, I bet you're hungry. I'll, I'll go get you some food, and then you can get your strength back, and then you go on your way, huh? Right? Yet, I mean, you travel all this way just to see me. I, I, I want to do this for you, huh? So, so, okay, all right. So don't go anywhere, huh? I'll be right back. <laughs> Don't leave. <laughs> Sarah? Sarah? What? We have guests. Get 36 pounds of our best flour and make some bread. Okay. 36 pounds. While Sarah made the bread, Abraham went and had a calf prepared. He brought some butter and milk and the calf to the three men who he knew was the Lord and they ate together. It's good, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's Sarah? She's over there. In the tent. I will surely return to you. About this time next year, your wife Sarah will have a son. worn out and my husband is old. Can I really have a baby now? Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, will I really have a baby now that I'm old? Is there anything too difficult for me? <laughs> Sarah will have a son. I didn't laugh. Oh yes, mm -hmm. you laughed. It was hard for Sarah to believe that the Lord would give her and Abraham a child, especially at their age. They had waited for so long. But a year later, God's promise came true. We will name him Isaac. Yes, God has given laughter to me. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Thank you so much, so-and-so show players. Great story, Kellen. Uh, how old was Abraham when Isaac was born? He was 100 years old. 100 years old, wow. That's a long time to wait and a long time to trust. Yeah, but I love that when God says something will happen, it happens. True. You can trust that when God makes a promise, that God will keep that promise. God promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed because of his family. And years later, one of Abraham's descendants, Jesus, was born. Wow. Wow is right. Hey, thanks, Kellen. We'll see you next time.
Later, guys. 100 years old. Wow. Yeah, you said that already. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't even wait eight minutes for the circus. Imagine if we had to wait for something big. Yeah. 100 years old. Wow. Right. Reveal the question. Oh, when have you had to wait for something big? Uh, maybe you've had to wait for a big vacation. Or maybe you're having to wait to make new friends after moving to a new town, and it's taken you longer than you thought. Maybe you're waiting to see your grandparents that you haven't seen in months. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you've had to wait for the circus to show up in your basement. I'm guessing that that has not happened to many of them. I said maybe. You did. Uh, well, that's all the time we have for you today. Yeah, so you will have to wait until next time. But we will be back. Trust us. Absolutely. Until then, I'm Brandon. And I'm still John. And this was The So-and-So Show. And this was The So-and-So Show. Wait, yeah, I think together again. And, and this, this was the so and so show. And okay, uh, and together again. And, and this, this was, was the so and so show. show.